We are gathered here today at the Global Will Economic Forum and we are absolutely delighted to have some amazing talent and some inspirational people, both young and old, uh, from all over the world who have come here. And they are game changers, they are special, they're creating special things, there are young entrepreneurs, all of them in one place. And the energy in this place is just absolutely explosive. And one of the person who is at igniting this place is Tia. Tia Merritt, welcome, good to see you. Pleasure, thank you. You coming hot off the press, you won the Jitex Award last week. Yep. Tell us what Teach Me Now is about. So Teach Me Now is a global marketplace for learning where we're connecting teachers and students all over the world, taking live personalized classes through our platform. So we're tapping into the sharing economy, creating jobs, but making learning accessible. So you're the Uber and Kareem of learning, of, of teaching. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Is it learning or is it education? Which one is it? Learning. I think education is the traditional world that we, uh, that we associate with, yeah. but it, it's truly learning. So whatever it is from academic study to mentorship, professional skills, or if you just want to improve your Pokemon Go skills, whatever it is that you want to learn, you can find it on teachmenow.com. I'm a little traditional, as I am a little bit older than you are, um, in terms of being able to touch and connect with my teacher, with my mentor, with person who will inspire me and, and guide me and nurture me. How do you fill that gap? So what we're doing is we're using technology as a facilitator, not a replacement. So we are still creating jobs for the traditional teachers and making that kind of facilitation accessible. So the person is actually live on the other side. It's not a pre-recorded video. So in the online learning world, uh, what we associate with is something called MOOCs, or Massively Open Online Courses. These pre-recorded videos have a 90% dropout rate, and that's truly to what you mentioned earlier, it's that personalized connection. So what we're doing, which is different, is that all of our classes are live, so there's a real person on the other side, and you have that personalized relationship, similar to a Skype call or a phone call, there's someone there. Um, and that's what makes our classes different. So we're taking that offline experience, just making it accessible from a global perspective online. Just looking at it more technically for a moment and then we'll get into the, the, the specifics. Um, from a cognitive learning aspect, um, have you done any kind of scientific studies into, or research that you might be following in terms of the structure that you are putting out there? Sure, we haven't done research ourselves, but what we have looked is other people's research. And we're focusing on that personalized element. So it's that one-to-one -one relationship. There's been numerous studies on this kind of learning experience. But that personalized and sort of one-to-one -one or individualized experience has over 200% efficiency rate because you have a personalized, tailored experience to um, target what it is that you need to learn. So that's what we're making accessible because having that one-to-one -one relationship offline is usually a very expensive one. But what we're tapping into is not just professional teachers, but also recent graduates, for example, who have a lot of skills and knowledge. And we're democratizing learning because you can get access to an expert, a recent graduate from MIT, for example, for $20 an hour compared to a traditional institution. So the fact that you can still have that personalized learning experience, but at a much more affordable rate, is what makes us different at teachmenow.com. So if I, was, if I would like to learn, if I'd like to go onto this program, what is my user experience? So you'll go to teachmenow.com and you search for what it is that you want to learn, be it a language, physics, math, or professional skills. And you can choose through this variety of experts that exist. We have a global network of teachers, tutors, mentors, and experts. Uh, and based on your budget and your requirements, you can interview them. And you'll take a live class once you agree on the time and date. And it all happens through any device because it's browser-based. So you have a live audio video chat, you also have interactive documents, so whatever I type you see, whatever you type I see, and that works on Word, PowerPoint and Excel, and we also have interactive whiteboards, and we save all that work too. So it all happens simply on any device, and it's very much a click to start button, and you connect to an expert on the other side. And how much do I pay for it? That's up to you. So as a teacher you set your own price. And we have people donating their time, but we also have experts for things like CFA who charge $100 an hour. So the range is really there. Uh, but the average hourly rate is around $30, and you just pay per minute. So you pay as you go. 
So if you want to do a quick 30 minute catch up, you only pay for half an hour. Is anybody else doing this? Because it sounds relatively straightforward in trying to pull it together. Yeah. So what is your barrier to entry and who else is doing this thing? I think our main competition is mostly the offline element. People are used to the offline personalized experience. Um, there are some who are getting into the online space, but they're mostly traditional institutes, just creating an online experience. Um, and what we do is, due to the success of our platform and our software, we're actually helping a lot of our potential competitors get online so we can create a white-labeled, rebranded experience for them and help them get online too. So that's, we're seeing a lot of interest and we're very fortunate to be partnering with a lot of great partners like GEMS Education, who are actually using our platform too. Excellent. Now moving forward, what are your plans? Are you, and like you, obviously you mentioned one of them, which is white labeling, um, perhaps franchising um, and, so, and potentially localizing um, because uh, in Africa you'll have giraffes and zebras, in India you'll have, I don't know, um, donkeys and cows uh, because people see things online learning in a different context. So what are you working on in terms of creating local contextualization? So we're working with a lot of partnerships. We're also working on something that's dear to my heart on an initiative for refugees. So people, instead of donating money, can donate their time and give back. So we're working with different partners and NGOs to set up the sort of infrastructure on their side and they'll be using the platform uh, to donate their time. So our future plans work in partnerships but also localization as well. We've already built it in Arabic, French and Norwegian actually. Um, so localization is another big one on our to-do list. Yeah. Now in terms of going forward, uh, what are, um, are you well funded, um, do you have enough of a financial backers or is everybody ch must be, everybody must be chasing you now? Um, we're in a very fortunate position. Um, we are revenue generating. We've also won several competitions that included cash prizes. Uh, we also have great partnerships and support from uh, partners like Microsoft. So we get $120,000 of free services on Azure or their cloud service through something called the BizPark program. So we're very fortunate to have great partners and players like that. You created this amazing platform, Tia. Um, we'd like to reach a billion people. How would you do that? So it's possible through technology, and I think the scalability really exists. Um, what, we are, what we have done is we are a cloud-based platform, meaning that it can scale to a million or even a billion people if it needed to. Um, and that's the beauty of the cloud, and that's the beauty of technology. And again, tapping into the sharing economy. So our first class actually happened between a professor in Venezuela, a junior student in Saudi Arabia. So again, very much a global concept from the start. And we would love to see how we can scale that platform with you. It'll be a pleasure to do that. Yeah. Um, the other piece that I find very interesting in this is the social impact that it's going to create. Yeah. Uh, one, obviously, is the shared economy. Yeah. But I think the second piece is the aging economy. Yes. There are several countries, yeah. Norway perhaps uh, included, yeah. where there is an aging population. Japan has an aging yeah. population, and, sure. and, and a lot of the Western countries are. Yeah. While in this part of the world, we have youthful yeah, populations. Yeah. So these are this, this, this intergenerational gap. Yeah. Uh, these people have the wisdom, yes, and these people need the learning. Exactly. And that's the connection. So you could yes. empower a complete new, older generation yes. of people. To share that knowledge and to share their skills, definitely. And we're seeing that because anyone can really teach, um, and tapping into that underutilized skill potential is really what we want. So how are you going to grade the teachers in terms of uh, their level? Because consistency will be a, an extremely important factor. What, what would you do with that? So like any sharing economy platform, there are certain rules and regulations and creating a strong sense of community and trust. So the community essentially self-regulates. So there are ratings and reviews. Um, you can interview a teacher before you start. So everything is very much built into the platform. What we did to start off with is actually target top level sort of Ivy League graduates and top level teachers within our network and sort of grow it out from there. That's how we started. Tell us your story, Tia. I mean, you're young, you're smart, but what inspired you to get into this and, uh, and how do you see yourself evolve in this journey? So if you had asked me a few years ago, I would never say I would be a tech entrepreneur. Um, my background is actually in international relations and economics. And I studied to get into the United Nations back in the day and I got offered an unpaid internship. I would worked at NGOs and similar organizations since I was 16. And for me, it was really about making an impact and making a difference. 
I started teaching two girls as I was studying in Switzerland. One had ADD and one had dyslexia. And they were both um, completely failing their economic exams. What I did at the time, completely offline, nothing to do with technology, um, was that I created personalized games based on the content. And through that game uh, sort of experience, they both got way above average results. And that was in the span of two months. I was not a certified teacher and I didn't have any experience in sort of learning disabilities, but I could really help these girls. And you know, their mothers were crying, uh, one went on to study economics. So for me, that was my aha moment where I saw, okay, it's through, it's really through education where you see a difference and an immediate difference. And I went on to study, um, sort of took a year off and self-studied everything I could about apps. I created one of the first game-based apps for high school students in 2011. And this was when apps were still very, very new and sort of up and coming before Angry Birds and all of that was successful. And through that app, I became sort of known as this expert for economics. And I had Skype, I had PayPal, I had email, I had a million things to coordinate my classes. But I was looking for this sort of global learning platform that I sort of went on to create looking for an eBay or an Airbnb model where I, as an expert, could set my own hourly rates, have everything in one simple space, and really leverage um, that sort of experience that all the other industries were seeing. And as a young person, um, getting back to that, my first app was at 21. I'm 26 now. And getting that opportunity that I really wanted in the United Nations wasn't available to me due to my age and my lack of experience. And sort of it's come full circle because now I'm, I'm making the impact and the difference that I want to see in the world, but on my own terms. Brilliant. Now, on the one hand, you have uh, content, and in your case, you're providing content through teachers and a video live-based environment. And the other hand is technology, and you're merging this thing together. This is a new revolution, isn't it? Yes. Um, so as a revolutionary, as an activist, uh, how can the people help you? There are 500 women here. There are 90 te uh, speakers here. How can they at the Will Forum help to impact the world uh, through, your, through your lens, through your filter? That's a great question. Um, really encourage everyone to go check out teachmenow.com. If you have something to share, even if it's for free, sign up. You can share your knowledge and sort of give back to the community as well. We're actively looking for partnerships, as I mentioned before, too, for corporate training as well. So if there's anyone looking for a partnership, please do get in touch at teachmenow.com. You were on a panel earlier on uh, during this uh, forum. Uh, tell us a little bit about that platform, uh, that, uh, that panel that you have, and what were your sort of feelings and thoughts as you came out of that? It was a very interesting debate. We all had different sort of backgrounds and, and standpoints as well on the education space. Um, so it's great to see a mix of both the academic side and the technology side and having a platform where we can have that kind of open discussion. Were you being beaten up by the academics and saying you're just not qualified for this and who the hell are you to be able to talk about education and learning and we are the PhDs and we're going to be handling this? Uh, what do you do to that? Yeah, I've, I've had that before. Fortunately, sure. <laughs> fortunately not today. Um, although everyone was a doctor on the panel. Okay. Um, but to that I say that we're here to facilitate, we're here to help. We're not here to replace teaching and the traditional institution. Yeah. Um, that's often the question that I get asked. So um, again, we are a facilitator, we're here to help. We're on the teacher side and the student side. Um, and again, we're just a platform to make things more efficient. At the end of the day, technology is disrupting all other industries yeah. from transport, hotels, logistics. Yeah. Um, and again, we haven't really seen that change in the education space yeah. yet. Yes. Yes. And we hope to make that change. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know that our company is called MAD, yeah. and MAD is make a difference. Yeah. Um, and I can see that you are really mad. Mad about mad, making a difference. Mad about making a difference. <laughs> yeah. And you're also mad because you are on the extremities of change because everybody else is in the middle and all great innovators were considered mad in their lifetime. So we'll give you the mad star. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. But uh, as, a, as a statement uh, for us, uh, tell us uh, how you are making a difference and how you wish to be mad in the future. So we're mad about making a difference, first of all, uh, by making education and learning accessible through technology, but also creating jobs for people around the world. And that's how we hope and aim to make a difference. Um, and the final question, as far as uh, the forum is concerned, uh, as I said, there are all of these wonderful, talented 
uh, high quality people here. Yes. What is your one request to them and to what is your one piece of advice to them as they walk out tomorrow to go out there to try and make that difference? That's a very good question. I think my main piece of advice is just to do it, as cheesy as it sounds, yes. just start. I think as women as well, we doubt ourselves very often. Um, also in different ages, we, we, there's continuous doubt, but just do it, just get started. You don't really know what's, what's happening until you really start. And I think that's the most important thing is also if you want to see change, be a part of that change. And for that, you have to do it. Um, so just get started. Just get started. Yeah. Tia, you have an amazing aura and energy and a great inspiration to all of us, young and old. Thank you for being here today. Thank, Thank you for you. all the best.